What is up, Stockton, California? I'm your girl, Carolita, and I am in Stockton, California at Delta College with your boy, Jason Lee. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. CEO, owner of Hollywood Unlocked. Yep. From Stockton, California, coming back to Stockton to run for City Council District 6. Well, yeah, I mean, coming back to Stockton, I mean, I've been back and forth for a long time. My family's all here. I've had a place uh, that I would stay when I would come in town over the last few years. But as I've gotten more active in my nonprofit here with the Hollywood Cares Foundation, our I Am Ready initiative, um, and just seeing all the issues, I now have just been sucked into this uh, political race for uh, District 6 seat, and uh, and we're going to win. And how is Stockton treating you so far? Great. Stockton is home. I mean, you know, people that have been following my career uh, for years, they see I talk about Stockton in every interview, whether I'm with DJ Vlad, Breakfast Club, wherever I'm at. Any celebrity that knows me knows about Stockton. You know, when, you, when you're when you born and raised in Stockton, there's a certain level of pride um, that follows you. And, um, and I've had a lot of that over the years. So um, they've been treating me well. I think that it's weird seeing people treat me like a celebrity in Stockton because it's like I'm a Stocktonian. You know, I feel like I'm at home and home. You know, but but I do acknowledge that, like, they see the work and they acknowledge the work and they give me my like, props and I appreciate that. So I've been treated well. Do you want to be treated like a normal person when walking through Stockton, though? I like, like being treated like a normal person everywhere. Yeah? Because I am a normal person. I just have an abnormal job. Um, I've reached a lot of success uh, doing what I do with Hollywood Unlocked, the Jason Lee Show, my books, my Wildin' Out, Love Hip Hop, all the different shows, Wendy Williams. You know, I've done a lot of work. But it's funny because as we're looking for this building, <laughs> I started radio here uh, with Delta College. I had a radio show. And uh, it wasn't as pretty as this. We didn't have all the resources. Upgraded. Yeah, we didn't have none of that. But I started my radio career here. And when I was doing it, I didn't even know I wanted to be in radio. And now, you know, looking back, I've had a – Nationally syndicated show with iHeart, 72 Markets, number one uh, on the weekends. Um, we, we've, we, you know, we've done the work podcasting and all that. So, yeah, my roots started here, and it feels good to be back. Are you moving all your podcasting and all that out to Stockton, or are you going to be still traveling back to Hollywood? Absolutely not. Um, I have Hollywood <laughs> Unlocked Studios in L.A. Uh -huh. I have Healthcare Unlocked in Miami, um, and I have homes there as well. And my business is there. All my staff are in L.A. and New York. In Atlanta. So, yeah, no, I'll still be traveling back and forth to do my job. My job, it, I have an amazing job. I mean, I created a career from scratch that has allowed me to travel the whole world. And mm -hmm. uh, so, no, we'll still be based in L.A. in terms of the business doing the work. And how much uh, time are you planning on spending in Stockton and between Miami and Hollywood and all that? Um. Well, I don't know my schedule of where I'm going to be on any given day, but or if you're asking what is my commitment to being back in this mm -hmm. community, you know, it's I've been here this week as much as I've been in L.A. Uh, I, you know, the work uh, that needs to be done in Stockton with my nonprofit and with the work, you know, joining the city council is not something that happens one day a week or two days a week, although I know the city council job is a ha part-time job. I mean, it's evident by some of the efforts of some of the people that sit up there now that it's a part-time job because there's not a lot of work that's being done that needs to be done. But I'm going to spend a lot of time here in Stockton because, again, this is now where my home is. Um, this is where my family is, and now this is where the work begins. And what are you running as, Republican, Independent, uh, Democrat? Democrat. Democrat? Mm -hmm. um, how does it, How is it running Democrat when you position yourself behind the mayor, Lincoln, when he was Republican? Do you think there's any controversy there or any... No, because, I mean, there are Democrats that sit on the city council that aren't doing much for the people. Um, mm -hmm. I don't get caught up in party line, Republican, Democrat. I think that let's talk about Mayor Lincoln, right? Uh, when I returned to the city years ago after I had a lot, uh, yeah, I had success, but not the level of success that I have now. Uh, when I came back to the city, I came back to help uh, Michael Tubbs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Michael Tubbs was a, a person that the city had uh, really rallied behind and believed in, and he had a great story. And my brother, who was in the streets, who was a gang member, uh, was friends with his uncle, uh, who was a gang member. And uh, they all grew up and ran the streets of Lewis Park. And so the name uh, was clear to me because I was friends with his uncle. I knew the family. And a lot of what he stood for, I believed in. And a lot of what uh, his messaging was about reinventing Stockton and helping people of color, I believed in. And so, you know, we tried to team up and work on some stuff, and it, you know, just didn't work out. And, uh, you know, I have my own 
issues uh, with the way that the government was working then. And then when I heard about um, Kevin running, you know, I, again, have a vested interest in the city because my family's here. My nieces and nephews go to school here. My whole family's in the city. So I met right. with him to ask him what he stood for. Mm-hmm. Heard he was a Republican and never supported a Republican in my life. A moderate Republican is how he identified. And this was, a, if you remember, this was like during the time Trump was in office. So right. like being on that, being on the right, being involved with anybody on the right was just ridiculous. But, you know, I think that... Um, the unfortunate part of living in a two-party system that we do in, in this country is that you have to identify with one side or the other, and it's almost like Bloods and Crips, and they both red and blue, too. you got to choose a side. I've always voted, supported, ran, believe in the, the, the principles of the Democratic Party, women's right to choose, uh, pro-trans, pro-gay, pro-life, um, uh, definitely about um, making sure that black and brown people have equity and that they are put in positions of developing entrepreneurship like me so they can thrive. Um, definitely Black Lives Matter, but also understand the complexities of policing and working with police in your community, um, having been shot and, you know, my brother getting murdered here. So, like, I understand the world a lot more vividly than a lot of layman folks may. And so when I met... Um, the mayor and asked him, you know, he said he was a moderate Republican. I said, are you pro-Trump? He said, no. Okay. Uh, what is your stance on a woman's right to choose? Well, he's a pastor, you know, he's a, in the church, so he's pro-life, but he's also not going to obstruct women to exercise their right to do what uh, they choose to do with their body. Okay. Um, I asked him where he stood on uh, the youth and provided opportunities for them. And he was clear that, you know, he supports a youth based agenda and really focusing on investing in young people. So everything that he said, I, I agreed with and could work with. And I didn't see somebody that was going to be uh, anti uh, what I believed in. So I did support him and I still support him. And I think he's done a great job of bringing and restoring class to the city um, and, um, you know, very much connected to the people. I think that, unfortunately, he governs in a city that's not a strong mayor city, so he doesn't have the authority that mayors around the country and other cities that I have homes in can run. You know, the president, uh, Karen Bass, Mayor Bass of L.A., who, are, who I'm friends with and who I helped get elected, she's the president of Los Angeles, so she runs the city. Uh, the city manager here runs the city, so people put their votes in electing city council members and, and mayors and have an expectation that they uh, do all the things they talk about on their campaigns, but then they get in a position where they don't have the support amongst their colleagues to move the city forward because it's managed and controlled by the city manager. So they're in a weird, very weird space, and I think Kevin has found himself there. But do I think that he's a man of integrity? Do I think that he's a very personable person? Do I think that he cares wholeheartedly cares about this community? Yeah. Do I think that he's been able to be 100% effective because of the politics in this city and how it's ran? Absolutely not. And that's why I'm throwing my name in the race. So as a city council member, we just you just explained that you're not going to have a lot of power. I didn't say going, that. That's not what no? I said. I well, you're that. not going to have um, power to be, you're going to have, just, you're not going <laughs> to. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let, <laughs> let me tell you something. You're interviewing one of the best interviewers in the business, and you're interviewing somebody who gives the greatest interviews. Because the thing that you're going to get from me is I don't hold back on anything, right? right? And I also am very much in control of my narrative. Uh-huh. I will never relinquish my influence over anybody, over anything. Because anything I put my passion behind, I put my face behind, I put my name behind, I put my credibility behind, I put my beliefs behind, I do it with the most passion that a person can can have. And I think that leadership is less about a title. I can speak to 6 million people anytime I go live on my social media. So that's influence that none of these local leaders have, right? These local elected people. So when when you talk about, or when, if, you're, if your question is, as an elected city council member with one vote, will I be in a position where I relinquish the ability to obtain more influence among my peers because I only have that one vote? No, I think that what the city council doesn't do well is put pressure on the other city council members to perform in the best interest of the, the, the constituents. For example, if I'm sitting up there with six other people or whatever, and there's seven votes and there's an issue around a matter that involves um, homelessness, right? Mm-hmm. They can find comfort in being split on how they prioritize it or how they vote to take aggressive action or maybe allocate resources. They can be split because 
neutrality is a comfortable place for people in the city. As long as I show up and act like I care or show up and vote, regardless of how it goes, I did my job. No. The job is you have to come up with a real plan for homelessness. You have to come up with real services that you can tap into the city's big budget to, to, to address. And then you have to find a way to build a coalition approach to the cure of whatever that issue is. And as a city council member, if I was elected or when I'm elected, you know, I'm not going to just sit there and go along to get along and be popular. I'm going to be very controversial in pushing the agenda of the people forward. But how would you get the other five council members to get on your side to do what you, you need, need done? You only need four votes. You only need four votes? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to tell you my full strategy right now because okay. the op is watching. The op is watching. Yeah, <laughs> the ops are watching. You don't think they're watching me? Of course the ops are watching. I'm not going to tell you my strategy. But the people that are looking at me when I come to city council or when I show up at these meetings, they look at me as the podcaster. They look at me as a talk show host. They look at me as a celebrity whisperer, an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm all that. But um, I'm also, um, you know, a veteran organizer. I spent 11 years in the labor union leading the biggest labor union in the country for healthcare workers, working with nurses, working with other healthcare workers, leading the Trayvon Martin campaign, you know, rolling up my sleeves, teaching uh, and organizing um, Spanish-speaking families on how to educate uh, the, the, their communities on reform and education for their children. So they're not thinking of me as an organizer, which is great because the op, they're disarmed with that. But now that I guess that I just told them they're going to start organizing and do what ops do. Yeah, I'm not worried about not having the support because I'm going deeper into Stockton, into the community, and finding people who actually care and organizing the city around them because the people have the power. They have the votes. They put the people in place. And it's important that they put the right people there, um, which is why I know that they're going to vote for me. Okay, so you pl claim that your opponents are – I watched your video this morning. Yeah. You went to the, the city hall, uh -huh. and you did your paperwork, <clears throat> and you're uh, – you're claiming your video that, or under your video in your caption, uh -huh. that one of your opponents are digging into your family and trying to spread rumors. Um, are you ready for that type of attack on your character? And is your family ready? And how does your family feel to get involved? Yeah, my family are South Stocktonians. We're ready for anything. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're from South Stockton, you've survived everything. Um, yeah, my family's fine with that. Am I fine with it? No. You know, I didn't get into, um, and to answer the question that you started at the top, am I ready for it? Yeah, I mean, I work in entertainment and in the news business. So I've interviewed some of the biggest celebrities. I've, I've met with some of the most powerful politicians. I've interviewed gang members. I've interviewed all types of folks, right? Um, I'm, I'm okay with people not liking me. Um, I'm okay with people attacking me, attacking my character, questioning my intention. He's an outsider. He's not from here. He's rich. He's this, he's this. I'm, I'm fine with all that, right? That is the stuff that I'm not going to spend time responding to because that doesn't speak to the heart of what people want to see in the city. People want to know that they can go somewhere on the weekend and have a good time and go, come home and not die. People want to be able to go outside and go get groceries um, but not have to drive all the way across town to get them, but can drive a block to a smoke shop or a liquor store. People want to take their kids swimming and teach them how to swim, but there's no function in public pool, and there's no plan to open McKinley Park, even though they put the money there, right? Right. Um, there's a, the big box ban was lifted. There's no plan to bring a big box store here to create more jobs and opportunity for people to be able to shop or whatever. So, yeah, there's bigger issues. My character is not one. It's been tested before, but if you read the Forbes article that just came out on me, unless you can uh, argue that, um, you're just a hater. And I'm not here to spend time with those folks. There's, yeah. like, real work that needs to be done. So politics as usual, not something that I'm going to focus on. Now, in terms of the caption, with, m one of, with my opponent, you know, kind of digging around trying to figure it out, you know, I, I, I believe in assigning a name to it, Kim Wormsley. You know, she's a very ineffective leader. Is she rerunning? Because as of... Well, she, yesterday she's pulled, it wasn't on the register. She's pulled her papers, but if she's smart, she won't run. And I'll tell you why. What is she going to run on? Four years of being lazy. Four years of taking pictures with the city manager and the people who own Mercedes Benz. Four years of no return phone calls. Four years of flip flopping on issues. Four years of protecting her personal interests. Um, you know, four years of looking at black and brown boys and girls in their faces who have to eat fast food every day because she doesn't have the relationships or the, the drive to go and find somebody to bring a grocery store to the community. Four more years is what she would want if she does put her name in of more people getting mowed down at the stores in South Stockton. Instead of uh, looking at those families with a plan, she looks at them as just a two-minute uh, public speaking comment at the city council. So I think that, like, 
the fact that she has bigger priorities that she needs to focus on and the fact that she hasn't even gone out and talked to the community and actually shown that she cares, um, you know, she's going around and talking about, you know, where my house is or where my family is or what my sister's home looks like and who lives in the home or this and that. How, where is she? Where is this? Where, you, where is she saying this information? I mean, uh, I own Hollywood Unlocked. I don't tell everybody my sources where I find out stuff. Okay. I'm not going to come here and tell the op my game plan, right? Mm-hmm. But what I will say is that I didn't get into the campaign for mudslinging. Um, I didn't get in the campaign to attack people's characters. Um, but if anybody has followed my career, they know that you know I thrive uh, in controversy. Right. I, I run towards conflict. I have no problem dealing with it um, or addressing it, and um, I do plan to, very publicly too, by the way. And you bring up food deserts um, a yeah. lot. That I actually did something to get into UOP with anything about food <laughs> deserts. Okay. So what was your what is your plan for food deserts in District Six? Because there's a couple of them. There's yeah. one off of um, A Street. Mm-hmm. What well, I call a food desert. I mean. There's pros and cons when it comes to big box stores in general, right? For example, like I'm a small business owner. Although my business is worth $50 I built that, right? Uh, But it's considered a small business. Right. Small business is an ability for small business owners to be able to thrive and have ownership, to have control, to have uh, the ability to interact with the public is an important thing for people to find financial freedom, right? But big box stores also, like a Walmart, can also shut down the ability for a small pop and shop to, right. to thrive because you could just go to Walmart and get everything there. So there's pros and cons to it. It creates jobs, adds to the local economy, it's access to resources, and, you know, it's a one-stop shop for everything you need. But then also if you have ambitions to be a sh- store owner. owner of your own, you know, yeah. you can't do that. That would be more difficult. I like to eat at healthy restaurants, too. I mean, yeah. I lost 132 pounds. I've been really you focused. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm really focused on my health. I'm very active in my health and being healthy. Um, I, so I do eat healthier. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm really focused on, like, eating healthy. But I, I also know that I, I also am very aware of, you know, although I grew up on Park and Sutter, Scribner Street, Southside, like the hood, like the streets of Stockton, I did make it out and I did create a life for myself where – I do have a lot of resources to um, eat healthier and have access to healthier foods. And I am on the board of directors of a grocery store um, um, initiative to build grocery stores in areas where there are food deserts. And so on December 7th, my my kickoff event is going to be that night. And that day I'm going to do a big press conference about my commitment to addressing that issue. And I'll be bringing a friend here, a very special friend, to, um, to help amplify that. So um, with the youth, you're you're running off of youth too. What's your three biggest policies that you're you are running off of? Well, I definitely think there has to be a youth-based initiative focusing mm-hmm. on investing in, in the youth. Um, if you've been watching what I've been doing here in Stockton, um, I came here in partnership with the mayor, Mayor Lincoln, to develop uh, a, f- a youth-based approach to uh, dealing with some of the biggest issues here: crime, nothing for folks to do. Uh, and then really just helping to unlock the dreams that people have like I had, right? When right. I was here, I had the county fair, so I was able to meet Queen Latifah that unlocked a, a, a vision for my life that I'm now on in pursuit of and, and, and doing very well in. Um, when we started to organize around the I Am Ready initiative, which is what I brought to Stockton, which is a pilot program for Stockton, I said, hey, to the city, I'll put a million in, you put a million in, and then we'll have a two million, two-year plan at really addressing the needs of these youth. And we had a really defined plan Kim Wormsley, uh, the mayor, came to my home in L.A. Uh, They sat down with me at uh, my dinner table and broke bread. And, you know, I don't know for you, but when you sit down and break bread with somebody and you have uh, a conversation, commitment around what your focus is, I take that really serious because, to me, I don't don't have time to waste. I look at, like, time is the most invaluable – I'm sorry, the most valuable uh, benefit to all of our lives because, like, this moment will never get back, right? So you got to make the use of it. and so when they when they made the commitments, I really believe that um, their intentions were pure and really wanted to see that um, the the resources the city has uh, or had would be invested in the young people. We went through that process, and uh, if you watched it, we organized the whole city to get behind that. We had hundreds of people come out and shut down City Hall. We had very clear commitment um, captured on tape that we put out on social media of the commitment to do it. We were able to pressure them to double the amount that we initially were asking for to two point zero eight six million. They put that money in a fund. They went through a process, and then they awarded that to a bunch of nonprofits mm-hmm. uh, and organizations that are out here doing the work. Um, and you know, although we didn't get 
the funding, we still have had two very active workshops with hundreds of kids since then. The mayor actually came and spoke in one, and it's been an amazing experience. We have an event coming up in uh, March called Stockton's Got Talent, where I'm going to bring people from the recording industry and uh, and give away a $5,000 prize and placement on Hollywood on Lockdown stuff for those who win. They're going to compete for that. But now, what I learned in that experience was the lack of transparency in the process, right? So, like, if you think about it, being a person of color or a woman, you and yourself being a woman of color, you know, you have ideas that say a white woman may have, or a woman that, or a white man may have, or some, or an Asian person may have, right? The one of the things that will become a roadblock to you in pursuit of that opportunity, even though you may not even believe it, will be you being a woman or you being a woman of color. Or you having a lack of access to information, right? So let me clear that. You that's why you think you didn't get. Oh no no no. Oh, okay. Let me land the plane. Okay. Because um, the programs have continued without the funding. It was never about the funding. Right. It was about the intentionality behind creating the fund, right? Mm-hmm. What I was saying a minute ago before you asked the question is that most dreams of people of color in pursuit of those dreams are stifled because they either stop believing in themselves because they see people that look like them get them before them. They get them before them because either they're getting them from people that look like them or they're not given the information on how to pursue them, right? So I feel like information sharing is a really important thing. Transparency is really important. When you level the playing field for everybody to have an equal opportunity to get something, Right. Then you make it fair for those to compete for something based on the ability to carry forth the effort that they're saying they're going to do. In our situation, I haven't spent any time really talking about us getting or not getting it because we actually are claiming the victory of the city getting two million dollars focused on kids that they hadn't done that before. Right. So for me, that's the victory because that was the intention behind coming to Stockton. So then we just continued with the work. But what I saw in that process that I do believe is a part of my campaign that I'm standing on is there needs to be more transparency in government, more transparency in resources that are available, more accountability of people to uh, make sure that there's a fair allocation and application of the resources. So if you have an experience on the north side, you should be able to have the same on the south side. And uh, and that is uh, part of what I'm running on the youth-based agenda. The other one is addressing um, the, the smoke shops and liquor store crisis happening in South Stockton where there's more of those than there are grocery stores. Right. So in talking about a commitment of bringing um, healthy food options, there's also about accountability that communities that look like us aren't surrounded by those places. Yeah, and the third thing is crime. You know, crime is a real issue, and people think that it's, you know, you know yes, I stand with Black Lives Matter and police accountability for sure, but you do have to make sure you have a police department that has the adequate resources and accountability to serve the community. But you also have to have community partners that invest in making sure that there's alternative things for youth to do, um, that there is accountability for crime, and that there's an accountability of the people that are serving the community. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's a part of it, but there's a whole lot more because we just launched a health care initiative yesterday. People don't have access to health care, don't right. even know the difference between preventative care and managed care. So making sure that people are aware of uh, community resources, federal resources, and that, you know, the people that are serving the community are doing that based on the needs, not on the politics. Now, when I seen that, I was like, why why didn't he bring the health care unlock to Stockton first? Why Miami? Well, well, so... You're, is, so are you assuming that we only brought it to Miami? No. Okay. I think you started it in Miami, and no. that, that's not your start no. place? So our partnership is with a company named Enhanced Health based mm-hmm. in Miami. So the reason why we partner with them in Miami is because that's where they are. You have to oh, partner. Okay. That's how you do partnerships, right? The initiative uh, we rolled out with uh, Krishan Rock yesterday on social media to over 8 million people around the country because ACA, which is the Affordable Care Act that Obama created, is a benefit that – um, leveled the playing field for people that didn't have access to health care options and zero dollar health care options like they do now through this initiative, right? The initiative is Hollywood Unlocked, which is the cool factor, partnering with healthcare, which isn't necessarily looked at as cool, and making healthcare cool is our mantra because You know, for me, I lost 132 pounds. I got active in therapy. I stopped drinking. I focused on my body and my health because I want to live longer. I just saw a kid at my workshop who came in and when I asked him, when I asked the kids to raise their hand if they believed they had a purpose to live, he didn't raise his hand. And when I asked him, he said, I I don't, I said, maybe you didn't understand the question. Raise your hand if you believe you deserve to live. And he didn't raise his hand. Um, You know, that kid should probably get in counseling. Mm -hmm. I don't know that kid's family background or or makeup at home, you know, to to know if, if he's 
if the nutritional value of his experience eating is there or if mm-hmm. he has um, access to resources. But, but you know, health care is, is something that is a big deal. So we launched it nationally, but our partnership was with a company that's based in Miami. Okay. And are you bringing uh, the partnership to Stockton or? Yeah, I mean, at my kickoff on December 7th, there will be a booth there educating people on health care unlocked and access to uh, the plans that we have. Uh, but again, it's all access through calling in or online. So if they okay. don't, if they have access to the internet, they can go to hollywoodunlocked.com slash healthcare. Um, and then on there, they'll see a way to call in and to get information. And did you get in through that? Did you do the healthcare because you have a background at Kaiser being in the union rep or just because you want to see families healthy? Um, well, it's a it's a longer answer, but I'll say in short that it first started with, you know, me going through my own process, my book right there, God must have forgotten about me. You could say I was 323 pounds. I'm 191 pounds now. I did the work on the outside, which mm-hmm. was rewiring my mental, which was uh, l- literally thinking about the food intake, thinking about the energy of peers I had around me, you know, friends, spaces, even some employees. Like, I don't tolerate negativity around me. Um, I got into therapy to start, uh, you know, dealing with getting shot, watching my brother get killed, being molested, having my mother on drugs, my mother dying from her drug complications and the different challenges I've had, foster care, all the trauma. But um, I, you know, I had my own personal journey. And then I then I started, you know, uh, meeting with the vice president of the United States, learning more about what the administration's initiatives are, looking at ACA, something Obama created, a first black president, uh, really believing in him and what he, he did for the country. And I said, yo, people don't even know they have access to care. So, like, how do I make this cool? How do I get some of the biggest stars? And how do I use my massive platform to promote that? That, in turn, led me to meeting uh, Matt Herman, who's my partner at Enhance. He sponsored or partially sponsored my award show, the Hollywood and Like Impact Awards, where we honor uh, people who are driving culture, using the platforms to drive culture. And once I met with him and I understood what he was doing uh, and what his intentions were, I was like, yo, I got to be a part of that. So we did the partnership. So let's go back into Stockton. What are your hopes for District 6? You know, uh, as I'm running the campaign, I'm, I'm making it clear to everybody around me that's uh, helping. And there's lots of energy around the campaign. There's lots of people coming out of everywhere, uh, Spanish-speaking families, Tagalog-speaking families, um, seniors, kids. I, th- I think the interest is uh, to being able, first of all, to see their representative because a lot of them don't see her. She's not out there in the streets uh, figuring out what's going on and figuring out real solutions and resources to bring to them. Two, um, I'm making sure that I'm running the election and trying to reach everybody in my district, not just those that vote, because I want everybody to at least be informed. I feel like people that don't vote maybe aren't necessarily not voting because they don't believe in politics. They probably just don't believe in the people that have been elected because they haven't seen any change. And then the third thing is making sure that everybody knows that I'm not Superman. So me coming and bringing this new energy hopefully will inspire all of them to get active in the process because a solution-based approach to crime, homelessness, accountability, resources is going to be, you know, when I pull up as your representative, you got to pull up too. So uh, whether it's making sure the Stockton Vikings all have matching uniforms and helmets, regardless if the parents can afford it or not, or if there's resources from outside of Stockton with some of my friends at, you know, brands that have lots and lots of money, or resources that they actually provide them with the support they need to be the best. You know, um, I will think back to like when I was 15 and met Queen Latifah here, the thing that I had then that I still have now was um, I had uh, ambition. Like I had the most ambition as a kid, nothing, nothing I wanted, nowhere I wanted to go, nobody wanted to know, nothing I wanted to accomplish. I I felt like I could do it, right? So I didn't get into this race hoping that I win. I got into this race already visualizing the work that's going to happen, the work that's going to be. you're going to win, that you're going to. Oh, of course. Go. Because I'm talking to the people who are fed up. Right. I walked into a park to look at McKinley Park Pool to under, to see what it looked like because I hadn't seen it in a while. Mm-hmm. And I ran into a family that was sitting there in a tent with a baby that has to use the bathroom in a bucket because the bathrooms are locked and they have no resources. But I had just left the Sikh temple who were telling me how they feed the homeless every day 24 7 so how does a community resource a few miles away and a family sitting in the park saying they need it not be connected because nobody's out organizing the people nobody's not talking to people they're not talking to people yeah. and 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 i think the reason why i'll go ahead and say it is because um a lot of these elected people serve one god and his name is harry black and that person who manages the city's piggy bank 
has all the issues. I just left a whole strike happening at City Hall with the with the um, public works workers, OP3. You know, there was nobody from the city out there talking to the people. These are people who every day wake up and feed their families based on service to the city. So how is it that somebody who's considered an outsider by them able to see the issues clearly and understand that I've been talking to people at the county supervisor level and I've been talking to people in the healthcare fields, none of them are working together. And you just saw the SUSD um, school board president get her house raided. Right. So if you go to school every day and you're being told not to lie, not to steal, not to write on the walls or else you're going to get a green slip, how is it the person running your school district got a major green slip with the people running up in her house? And how do you explain to the kids that the green slip that you're making them be afraid of, their leader, getting green slipped every day? You know, I think the FBI is investigating them, too. I don't know. Right, so but there's people, nothing that you can do about that. There's a lot I can do about it. Are you crazy? Are you, do you, okay, do you watch Hollywood Unlocked? I watch you every day. So <laughs> when you, you, you mean to tell me you think that if I say something's happening, that people aren't going to see and hear about it? Uh, they can, but what what exactly is that going to change? So Just because you talk about it out loud doesn't mean people are going to change. What is are. the process of change? Because well, that question, what, what up, you just okay. said right there, is what, I, one. what you just said right there is what I hear from people all day long. That means that you all have a mentality of being a hamster on a hamster wheel on fire. And let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, what is the process of creating change? Do you know? Standing up to the people and... Keep, the process no? is three steps. What's, What's the, the three, three steps? steps? Tell me, do you know? No. Most people don't know. You inform them of the problem, uh -huh. you agitate the hell out of them, and then you tell them what to do. That's how you move people to action. I learned that in the union, right? We know the problem. The city ain't functioning. Right. The city management isn't managing the city effective. The the crime, we know the issues. So then mm -hmm. you you agitate them. People are already agitated. You don't even need to agitate anymore. We're all agitated. Right. Okay, so now what's the action? Does anybody have a plan? No, but it sounds like you do. Right. And I want to want to know your plan. So, again, remember, the, the, ops, <laughs> the ops are watching. The ops are watching. <laughs> but those of you watching, the ops are the people who oppose change, the people, the haters. the pe You know that worker that sits in the booth next to you that every day you come to work, he or she got something to say, and is always negative and doom and gloom, but don't have no solution? That's the op. I'm not, I'm not going to give the op my plan right now. I'm going to lay it out very thoroughly, and I invite you guys on December 7th to, okay. uh, to come and see that. But, um, yeah, my plan is to win in the primary. I'm going to do everything I have to do to win. I'm very competitive. Do you think you're going to bring more people out this turn because you have more? Yes. Yes? Yeah. So even for the whole, you're going to make stock more of Stockton come out because the elections have been very low the last couple because years. Because people have given up. People have be people. This is the crazy thing that drove me crazy yesterday. I was, mm -hmm. I was like, exhausted yesterday because I went, I, I, I started, my day started 3.30 in the morning and ended at 10.30 at night. Every conversation I had with everybody has given up hope. But they all are still very frustrated. Are these people in Stockton? Yes. Mm -hmm. But they're all still very frustrated with the sta state of the city, right? They're frustrated, but they've given up hope. Last night I spent about two hours talking to a group of people. The whole time was about how mad they were. But then they were so distracted by the stories of why they were mad that they couldn't even spend half the time focused on the solution. And I'm, get, I'm a very yeah. solution-focused person. Um, you know, okay, so, so yes, I do have a plan. Part of the plan is win in the primary. And I'm going to do everything legally that it takes to win. <laughs> Celebrity <laughs> endorsements? I'm going to do everything legally Is that Cardi it takes B coming to out here? I'm Ow. Gonna, I, I will say I'm not going to speak for <laughs> Cardi because I love you. Hey, Cardi. But, you know, you saw, I don't know if you saw my social media on the video that I posted. She went in there and she goes, let's go. You know, everybody that I know that's watching what I'm doing understands where the heart is, right? My heart is really in the work and in the city. But in terms of a plan, mm -hmm. I will say the plan is to win in the primary and then the work starts there. You know, okay. the position starts January 1st, 2025, mm -hmm. right? But the work starts on March 5th because you have to build coalitions. You have to know who the people are that you're going to put on committees to help guide the work. I'm going to have to build relationships with the county and with the school district in order to work as a collective so that way we're not fragmented in our approach. I'm going to have to look at what resources are going to be there with my friends who are brands or, you know, Nick Cannon, who I just talked to the other day and said, hey, can we bring Wallen out to Stockton? 
a night where families can come out and have a good time. Man, I'm on the show. I love that. They used to have the crazy thing is about Stockton. The first time I seen Chris Brown was in Stockton. The mm-hmm. first time I seen I Forty Too Short was in Stockton, mm-hmm. and yet it's like hard to get people. I mean, we had Sweetie a couple months ago, but. That's not yeah. Chris Brown in your 40s, so... <laughs> hey, no shade to Sweetie. Hey, I'm trying to get her back on my show. Hey, Sweetie. No, I mean, look. Um, if you brought a music festival here for two days, where would people sleep if you had 30,000 people want to spend the night in Stockton? They would probably be in Lathrop. And there's a couple... Um, there's there's, there's not a, a couple lot of... Hotel, there's not a lot of hotels. The ho- hotel down, downtown that everybody would flock to first. That would sell out first. Okay. And then... The Hilton... But, yeah. but the point is, there aren't a lot of hotels here. No, So, not like, at all. there's no real plan to house a huge 30. No. How are they going to get around? There's no real advanced public transportation no. system, right? Um, so, when you think about that, do people from outside of Stockton want to come here with the narrative being that it's so violent, doom and gloomy, you'll get killed and robbed? People are afraid, no. too. So, you got to have a plan to... Um, encourage people to either reroute touring. Like, for example, there's a guy named Michael Rapino. None of the people running know who that is. He's the CEO of Live Nation. I have access to Michael. Michael controls all the routing for all the tours that happen in North America through Live Nation. Okay. So the first thing is I don't think the city should uh, own and manage a facility that they don't know how to operate. So the city should try to sell that. They should be trying to sell it to somebody like a Michael Rapino. Or other people. I talked to somebody the other day. Sell the... The arena. Okay. They should sell it. Okay. Why, why are they managing an arena that they don't know how to manage? Like, it's underutilized more than it's utilized. Yes. That's taxpayer money. Okay. To fix it, it's taxpayer money. Mm-hmm. And to manage it and is... And it ta- needs to be fixed. And it needs to be fixed, but it mm-hmm. needs to be owned by a company that is in that business. And that right. can also, at the flip of a switch, be able to reroute tours that bring events to the city so people will have other things well, to do. Well, Live Nation is a great one. Well... I have a plan. Okay. I'm out on December second. You 7th. out here spilling? I'm not spilling all the your tea. I'm, I'm not spilling the <laughs> political tea right now. But what I'm saying is, I'm not approaching. You know, if you watch my show, you know that so the Jason, the entertainer, is very animated. Is very creative in getting the 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 social media to go viral. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. gonna do that on the city council. I'm gonna run that the same way I run everything else. I'm gonna be very vocal and very whatever. But I'm also a businessman. And I think that when it comes to increasing tourism, increasing revenue to the city, increasing accountability of how the city needs to probably let go by way of sale some of the resources that they should have never been in. Um, You remember when they booked that one artist for a million dollars and they lost all that money? No. Was that Lou Diamond, Paul Diamond? Whatever diamond it was, it was a diamond in the rough. It was almost as sad as the (laughs) Queen of England wearing them blood diamonds from Africa. It was robbery, and it was taxpayer money spent unwell, and it drove the city closer towards bankruptcy, which they ended up getting there. And even coming out of that, instead of... Uh, change just changing the management uh, system of the arena, they still own it, and they're still asking the taxpayers to pay for it. They should sell it. So I will say here, one of my plans is to bring in people from outside of Stockton who can look at buying it and being able to um, reroute touring here to create business for the city and entertainment because kids nowadays won't ever meet a Queen Latifah like I did because there ain't nowhere to go. No. And uh, and your memory of meeting Chris Brown or my meeting of Queen Latifah shouldn't just be a, a sad memory of what will never happen what again. What used to be. Yeah, right. like it should be. Like we should be thriving here. Right, right. So um, in the south side, in that area, especially in Western Ranch, because, you know, I grew up in Western Ranch. My kids go to school in Western Ranch. There is nothing to do for the youth out there. Like okay. literally nothing. Yeah. Um, the school will have little functions that I'll bring my kids to. But other than that, there's literally nothing I can bring my kids to and be like, here, let's have fun for the day. We have to go to March Lane to go to the Sky Zone. Do you have any plans on bringing anything out there for the youth? Yeah. Um, well, one of the things that like I just used Nick Cannon as one example, only because that was the latest conversation I had. I called him. I said, hey, I said, you know, I'm running for city council back home. He said, yeah, I saw that. I said, he said, OK. I said, uh, he said, congratulations. I said, my question you know, I was on Wild and Out. Should we? Can we bring Wild and Out to Stockton? He said he's down to do that. So, like now, what does that "I'm down to do that" mean? You got to right. figure it out. But that would be at the it. arena, right? That wouldn't well, be well, specifically in West Ranch because people have to travel out of West Ranch. Well, Some people can't well, travel. Well, listen, you travel to Sky Zone. Yeah, right? I have a car. So, so <laughs> are we going to build 
wilding out in the middle of Western Ranch, where would we put 12,000 people? I don't know. You don't have the But facility. that's what I'm saying. Like, is there anything that you would do specifically in the Southside area for the youth? Yes. Yeah, so there is a plan for the youth for South Stockton that will be communicated on December 7th. That might okay. kick off. Okay. Uh, and, and I want people to get it all at the same time because uh-huh. we're going to have um, a special guest there. We'll have lots of visibility. There'll be lots of press. And we're sending out 10,000 personalized invitations to people. And we're going to be making sure that we're very active online in inviting people out. You know, am I going to tell you that I'm going to build a sky zone for Western Ranch? No, no. because I'm not okay. Superman. Would I, do I think there should be creative ways of finding development for stuff in South Stockton? Yeah, which is why I said I'm not taking any groupie or Spanos money unless there's a plan to develop on the South Side. Um, people were surprised I said that because I guess they pay for a lot of elections, which is why they probably... Well, they built up all of 8 Mile uh-huh. within a blink of an eye. You sit in Western Ranch. We've been there for 20-something years. There's no, literally nothing there. Right. I but went to people... high school and we was like, we can't even ditch. Like, where are we going to go? <laughs> <laughs> Not that was the question. <laughs> but seriously, you know, it's funny. People are now cutting school just to stay at school. They just don't want to go to class. Right. But, you know, there's nowhere to, ha- there's nowhere to go. But... Let me ask you, do the people of Western Ranch care that there's they nothing care? for their kids to do? I believe so. My, um, They used to have community, um, what is it called, the community where they bring them Warm. out. Yeah. And my parents went one time, and my Mayor Tubbs was just basically like, y'all on your own. Mm. Figure did, it out. Have you seen Kim Wormsley? No, never seen her. Um, did, has she built anything in Western Ranch? No one's built anything. Well, they got a McDonald's now and a 7-Eleven. I mean, child obesity and, is a huge issue. Right. So I'm Especially asking, in Stockton. So I'm asking, like, has Kim, and I'm just, let me flip it around on you. Okay, uh-huh. so has Kim Wormsley, your representative, done anything to advance the needs and interests as a mother or kids in the community? In my eyes? <laughs> just look at the camera and answer. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting me on the no, spot. I'm, just I'm trying to be in the middle. I'm it's just yes, be... no. You you being objective. It's just yes or no. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> is there a, is there a um, smoke shop in Western Ranch? Yes. Do I people hang it. outside? Yes, and I hate it. I hate pulling up. I'd be like, okay, there's too many people outside. Let me back this car up and just go. Don't people town. be speeding <laughs> all through there? How is it that I know the yeah. issues? But I'm not. How do you know the issues? Because well, I live there, but I also talk to people. Okay. Um, now, has Kim Wormsley publicly said she's going to put a ban on smoke shops and liquor stores in the development of any more of those in South Stockton and look to shut down those that are within a two mile radius of a school? No, that's but what I that's, plan what, to do. that's what you're planning on doing. That's what. I'm, damn, I'm telling you my plan. <laughs> Y'all got to come on December seventh. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's one of my plans. You know, that doesn't mean that the people loitering outside the smoke shop are bad people. They ain't right. got nowhere else to go. Right. So people go where they can meet up with the homie. We got to figure out. Maybe you go meet up with the homie at an E-40 concert at the arena. Maybe you go meet up for uh, bring your kids to the I Am Ready workshop down at the hotel where there's food and there's DJs and there's money being given to people with talent. You know, we have to create the change on one person, but I have to find the people like me. And I just left the Taft Center where I met people who have interest in helping seniors. I went to meet with uh, folks uh, at the schools who have an interest in figuring out how to organize the athletic groups in South Stockton and provide resources. Like, the people are out there. They just don't have anybody help coordinating or anybody that cares enough. Kim Wormsley only cares... And I'm using her name because she's the person that's in the office now. But there's other people running against you as well. There are. And you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. I've talked to Zoila. Mm-hmm. I've talked to Satnam. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they have a real big heart, and they want to see change, and they believe in the city. I, I, I will say that. I don't see these as people who are ill-intended or have – I don't know what their other political interests may be. I don't want to be a mayor or vice mayor, governor or senator or congressman. I'm not – yeah. But what I will say is all of them want to unseat Kim because they want to see change, right? But wanting to see change, as I've told them both, is you better have a plan. Because as I run against you, I'm not campaigning on just the hope that people are frustrated and want change. I'm running on a plan. I'm running on an agenda. I'm running on the work that once I'm elected, I have to have to execute. Because I won't be the person that goes and looks in people's faces after having made all these promises and then don't do nothing. Like, I'm not that person. Everybody that knows me knows what you see is what you get. What I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do. Is it going to be easy? No, because I'm one person. But my ability to be effective and organized, my ability to apply pressure, my ability to bring in outside resources, and it's not just resources like a Nick Cannon. It's resources like the Department of Justice. It's resources like the federal government and SBA. There's other relationships. I'll be with the President of the United States on Friday. There's other people that I have in my phone book that I think can help turn the city around. Now, 
again, I'm not a politician. So if you ask me all the details of Measure A, the warehouse uh, uh, initiatives, you know, the low quality, the low air quality in South Stockton versus North Stockton, I'm digging into those details now okay, because so you're now be studying it. Oh, uh, I have up? so much. Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking at all that. All, okay. all that. Because I got to know the issues. Right. But then more importantly, I'm also on next door saying, do y'all know that the life expectancy. Not next door. Oh, I'm on next door. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> Every morning. Are you I'm crazy? A, I'm going to get find... on there and just find you. Be like, oh. what's up? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm active, right? <laughs> Photo shoots and all. But, what, but, but it's a good way of hearing, like, with the people in real time, what they like and what right. they don't like. So I'm in next door talking to the people. And I'm like, did you know on purpleair.com that the life expectancy on the south side because of the air quality is 10 years less than those out north? They're like, no, I put the map up there. They're like, what? So your kids are literally going to die 10 years before the kids across town Jeez. just because of the low air, the bad air quality. And so but why Kim we... Wormsley is riding around with coffees and hanging out at Mercedes Benz with the, with the, <laughs> the mucky Mercedes mucks? Mercedes Benz. <laughs> why are you hanging out? In places, of, I have a three hundred thousand dollar Mercedes uh, Benz vehicle outside. I I don't need That's to printer. go to Mercedes Benz. I own a lot of them. Mm-hmm. My point is, that makes you feel like something. Well, what makes me feel better is when I can look at a parent who says, "Because of me, their kid signed up with healthcare unlocked and have healthcare," or "Because of me, the toy drive we're doing on December twenty third, where we're giving away thirty thousand dollars worth of toys to the community." It's going to be good that I know these kids are going to go home for Christmas with something. Because I remember the year when my mom got on drugs and we didn't have nothing. Right. Kim Wormsley don't care. And I know I sound like a politician now saying that. Yeah. Um, A lot of people are saying that you're doing this for clout or because you lost the $2 million from the council. Um, Is this the reason? What what would you say to those people that say that you're ready for clout? People on the line. Who said that? I'm like, who told you? Uh, Who told me? Yeah. The website, 209 Times. I'll be following 209 oh. Times, going to the comments, just comments. Oh, they said that in the comments. Yeah, oh. not 209 Times. Um, no. Okay, so um, I own a $50 million company. $50 uh-huh. million, not right. five, not 15, 50. Right, can um, I get some? I own that. <laughs> um, I run it, I own it. Clout, I literally own one of the top culture platforms in the world um, that was just ranked number 15 media company in the whole world by Inc. Uh, 5000. So I don't need the clout. I'm actually the person that gives the clout to the entertainment industry. Um, I don't need fame. Got that. I don't need press because I am the press. I own a media right. company. Um, I'll be on The Breakfast Club next week talking about me running. So those of you who watch Breakfast Club, you can check it out. Um, yeah, these people are striving to be mayor. I'll be with the president on Friday. You know, there's just different levels to the game that all of them are playing. I'm not one, again, to feed into those narratives. Uh, if I was heard about us not receiving the grant, I wouldn't have had two workshops paid for out of my own foundation budget. I wouldn't have partnered with people in the community, uh, the the um, youth organizing committee or the community partnership network of other leaders who are doing the work. We actually care about the city of Stockton. We don't mm-hmm. care about the comments on the 209 Times or the record or Stocktony or any of the other platforms out here. I will say 209 Times did share my campaign video because apparently they saw something that they thought was worth getting information out. And there's a lot of people in the city in the politics that may not like 209 times, but they were the first, even though I'm going to talk to Fox 40 today and now talking to you and talking Mm -hmm. to other people, they were the first to actually share the platform. So it's all about getting information out to the people. What people say, don't say, like, don't like, it's their choice. And their vote is their vote, whether they believe in watching this video that that's somebody I like, he's different. Because I don't know anybody else that you guys have had up here that talks like me, that looks like them, and that honestly don't give a shit about the political landscape of this city or the ladder that these other people are climbing. Do you I'm think different. that's going to work against you? Or do you think that's going to work for you? I think it'll work for me with the work people. Work for you? With the people. Is right. it going to work against me with the system? Right. Yeah, people are not going to be happy. Change is uncomfortable. But do you, did somebody say to Rosa Parks, why are you sitting in the front of the bus? This is uncomfortable. Did somebody say to uh, Nelson Mandela, yo, you're going to go sit down for 27 uncomfortable years because you keep fighting for freedom. Did they say that to Barack Obama when 2008 became a, a, a first black president after only serving in the Senate one term and people not even really knowing who he was? And they said he wasn't even American, that he the whole birther acting happened. Like, listen, change requires people to step forward in a very fearless way, in a very transparent way, go through the storm. I have about 100 days left until the election day. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be 100 hard days, and then the work, the real work happens. But if somebody told Cesar Chavez or Dorothy uh, 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 Horta, get out them fields because uh, the 
Dolores Huerta, sorry, yeah. uh, who I've met several times in the in the labor uh, fight. You know, get out those fields because the work that you're doing is not important. I mean, they wouldn't have organized the, the, the workers who are doing that work uh, that, you know, were uh, working in, in some really hard working conditions for years. So change you, is painful. It is. It is. And are you? Are you I can handle it. I, yeah, I've been yeah. shot. You know how painful that is? <laughs> My dad's been shot. So he can tell you, how, how, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, when you interview the other people running, ask them mm -hmm. about violence and ask them if they've been shot. Like, knowing gun violence has to be more than a speaking point. You have to know what it means to recover from being shot. Oh, believe shot. me. I stopped. I mean, I've never been shot, but I stopped going out in Stockton because everything I would go to would be shot up. I'm just like, I'm not going to risk my life. But that's not fair, right? I mean, it's not it's not fair to you. You should be able to go out. But also, but ask the people coming, mm -hmm. if you're going to run on a fixing crime what does crime mean what does it feel like what does recovering from a gunshot what does watching your brother get murdered feel like and how do you bring your family together how do you work through depression how is mental is is gun violence a mental health issue or a health care issue and how do you what resources does it take to actually address that how ask do you them plan, but how do you plan on fixing violence is that's not something that you can fix overnight that's not something of you can fix not. in your term of course not that's something that you're gonna have to Dig and dig and dig and try so to... Lots of work. You can't I, also get money. You can't just, like, throw money at it either. Of course so. not. Well, I just left the police department where I just met with the deputy police chief to talk about what the police... What community poli what does community policing look like out here? What does the relationship between the police department and the community oh, look I like? Oh, I think it's horrible. You know, uh, what are the needs? Uh, where are the barriers? Uh, and then I was sitting in the meeting with a person who's a community activist who's actually out talking to the people that are a part of the crime problem, right? Um, and so how do you tie all these services together to where, and again, bringing in the healthcare folks, right, to focus on a plan. There has to be a coordinated plan. There has to be resources, and there has to be accountability. And I'm going to do that. Um, well, I, uh, so far, you have been good at what your responses. I like your responses. I can't really say that because... I have to do my other no, people, you, but... You, you can say it because you're going to vote. <laughs> and Kim Wormsley, she ain't voting for you. But you know what? Kim Kim Wormsley shouldn't vote for herself either. Kim, Kim should... Either. Kim should... This is my advice. Because like I said, I'm going to do what it takes to get to the people. And I'm going to do what it takes to win for the people. And that means exposing what isn't happening, exposing what's bad. And I'm sure they're going to do the same for me if they have those opinions and ambitions. And that's okay. At the end of the day... People have the right to vote, and I hope they mm -hmm. make the right decision. But if they choose to vote for her and they're happy with what they currently have, good luck. That's really my answer to that. Right. So you'll be at the community, because they do have community get-togethers, I know, in Western Ranch the and forums. stuff like that, the forums. Yes, yeah. where we debate. And you'll be there. To debate. Absolutely. No, when they go in front of the people. Um, yeah. not It's not a forum, then. It's when they come and see... Talk to Western Ranch and be like, this is what's wrong with Western Ranch. How are we going to fix this? You know what? If I get invited to that, I will go. I haven't been invited. But I did get called that I'm, you know, there's going to be certain forums or debates to have conversations. I'm, I'm looking forward to all that. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I've been out here talking to the people because right. I want to understand what the needs are. So I've heard all the complaints. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that people aren't going to be happy with me because there will be people if I make a decision on something I think is in the best interest Can't of the community. Can't make everybody happy. Can't make everybody happy. But you damn sure be making the majority happy if you know what the majority need. Right. The needs out here, as you were talking, like places to go for kids, resources in the community, you know, accountability of government to be present, people to interact with the community, but also like ad addressing homelessness, crime, smoke shops, liquor, like fo healthy foods. Like everybody knows the issues. This, the crazy yeah. thing is how we not have healthy foods when we're living literally in a farm. If you go to Western Ranch, that's literally like you're in farmland. Ain't this, ain't this the biggest festival here? Yeah. Asparagus is a vegetable. I mean, this is a port city. This is a city <laughs> where, you know what I mean? Well, McDonald's, like, runs the city. The city, <laughs> ma Harry Black <laughs> runs the city. So that, that that you know, I'm going to talk very specifically to the way the city's managed, the way that the elected leaders aren't empowered to lead, and the politics that plague the city. And I'm going to talk about all of the challenges that we all know exist and on a December, plan on how to move forward. On December, December 7th. 7th. Yes. Can I get an interview with you on De December 7th? 
You know, I don't know what, <laughs> what interviews I'm doing. I mean, the press are all going to be there. I mean, I, there's the, all the press are going to be there. Um, I mean, I'm going to be there talking to the community, so I'm not really going to be focused on talking to the press individually. I mm -hmm. really want to talk to the people. But uh, I'm sure they'll, be, not only by interview, but, like, if you pull up, I'm sure we can get a couple questions off, you know. Where is it held at? Let me tell you where it's being held because I just changed <laughs> the location today. It's going to be at August Knott Junior School. Oh, uh, that's my elementary school I went to. Great. Tell all the people there to vote for me. I know they're supposed to be non-political <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, it'll be there in the gym, and uh, I'm excited about that. I'm going to pull up. Cool, Do you yeah. have to be invited? Well, we are going to send out 10,000 invitations, okay. um, and then we are gonna we have other methods of reaching people. I'm going to post it all on social media. We're going to do press. I have interviews today. So, yeah, I'm going to invite uh, everybody out. I mean, you know, yes, I'm running for District 6, and I want District 6 folks there, so we'll be making sure that you're from District 6 when you get there and all that. But once elected, then I'm supporting the city. You know, okay. I'm, I'm focused on my district, of course, and the needs that I'm campaigning on, but I'm also going to be very active in um, – everything that goes on within the city. And you're planning on working with the rest of the city council members Absolutely. that are running? And the city management, whoever that is, if it's Harry Black or and somebody else. And another mayor is running this? or Because the mayor is there's, leaving, There's right? a group of people, yeah. You know, Kevin's leaving and, and following his ambitions and whatever. And, again, the work that needs to be done is less about the people that are sitting up there, whether they stay or not stay. It's the people that are there while they're there doing the work. I think that Kevin is doing his best, but he also doesn't have the support to be effective. And while I'm running this campaign, I'm also making sure that I'm looking at how to build the right support. And once I win, I plan to come out and support other people. So that way the whole city can win. Yes. You know? But there will be four votes at the end of this election that are all aligned for the best interest of the city. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. It was nice meeting you. Of course. I, when, you told, when I met you, you said you wanted me to come and do the interview. I just had to find that the right time. That was in May. It's always about timing. <laughs> I could have flew to you. <laughs> yeah, but it's all about timing, right? When, when I went in in May, uh, I was in the heart of launching the Jason Lee show, right? Um, and Which is doing it. great. It's doing phenomenal. I was in the process of, um, you know, doing a lot of work with the White House and figuring out how to build a stronger relationship with the administration. And my launching my nonprofit, my award show was in June, so like mm -hmm. I had a lot going on. But I'm here now. Well, thank you for coming in. This is. Wait, has Kim Wormsley College? been here? No. Hmm. She'll be coming in if she's running, though. She ain't coming. She'll be com she's well, not coming. So she's not running, but she has to come. If she runs or walks, she ain't coming <laughs> here because, you know, one thing I will say is I appreciate She'll you. She'll decline? Well, she won't have answers if she comes. So unless you want to just talk to dead air, then that's why you would invite Jeez. her. I mean, but, you know, <laughs> if you're asking somebody to come here with a plan. Now she has to come. But you didn't tell us your plan. Kim, you're not coming if you don't come here, if you don't come here to 209 Talk. How are you talking to 209? You shouldn't be running for anything other than the exit, the exit. <laughs> for this office that you're in. This is the vice mayor of Stockton, the vice mayor of a former all-American city who can't be found anywhere but working at City Hall every day, her day job Stop on it. the city budget. Oh, don't want to even raise no <laughs> ethics violation complaints, but you know. These people do whatever they want. They piggy bank, they, they politic with the piggy bank. They rub shoulders at the Mercedes-Benz dealership uh, with their with their colleagues or cohorts, and then they walk around with all this pride about a title they have, but they don't do the work. We're gonna change that, okay? Because this is change you can count on. That's my that's my campaign that slogan, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> the change you can count on. Don't you like that? Yeah. The change you can count on. It's giving like Barack a, Obama hope. No, that was change you could believe in. I love. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you gotta have hope though you gotta have hope because if you don't have hope i found love and a hope let's play well that's rihanna but you gotta have hope you bring in rihanna look bye come on nice no now we gotta talk about the bye. real stuff like where's cardi b and rihanna bye. <laughs>